when it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property. Our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property. It's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! Brendan Rogers says Celtic are on fire and they're one game away from a double. Is it going to happen? We come into the game in, in the ideal condition. I don't think there's any, any doubt in that. We've been on fire the last few months, playing really well. Um, lots of challenges for us at the beginning of the season. You know, playing every three, four days whenever really important players are missing. So that that, that was a challenge. But I think over the course of as the season has built up and then into the pressure moments of of the season, the players have been absolutely superb in how they've dealt with that. So we arrive having won the league in in, in a really really good way, playing well. So we we come in in a real good condition for the game. But Rangers are also one game away from a double and Philippe Clement is ready to press the gamble button. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor so we're not speaking about injections but all the players want to play this game. All of them. All in the dressing room and some want to go, want to go really on the edge to be there to play that game so we're going to need to make smart decisions about that. How many minutes they can do without it's too much risk of course. I, I need to see tomorrow a training. So that's the, the final moment to show that you're fit enough to play uh, some minutes in the game. Otherwise, if you didn't train all week, it's impossible to play some minutes in the game. On the Go Radio Football Show, we've already made a pre-match gamble. Rob McLean in for, for Paul Cooney on the show for the next couple of hours. Less than 24 hours to go to the Scottish Cup final. It is Celtic against Rangers. Just a couple of miles from here at the National Stadium. Barry Ferguson, how are you feeling? Um, nervous, always, when these games are, are, are coming up. Um, listening to Brendan Rodgers, I agree. Celtic are, are playing some really good stuff uh, at this moment in time. And on the hand, Rangers aren't, but it's a one-off game, um, Rob. It's a Scottish Cup final, so Rangers really need to be at it if they want to end the season in a high and clinch a double. Mark Greedy, can you believe it's the first Old Firm Scottish Cup final since for 22 years? Uh, no, I can't, but very, very excited about it, Rob. Um, I remember the 2002 Scottish Cup final well, as I'm sure Indeed. Uh, you, there was only one of us in here that walked away with a winner's medal that day, and he's sitting to my left-hand side, and what a game it was. It was a yeah. great final, 3-2, full of drama, last-minute goal, Celtic leading twice, over the 90 minutes, I do remember Rangers deserved um, their victory to give Alec McLeish the two cups that season and Celtic at the league. So it's a very similar scenario going yeah, this Saturday. Celtic have won the league, Rangers have won the league cup and the Scottish Cup is up for grabs. All to play for tomorrow, Rob. Really buzzing, really looking forward to it. So Rangers would love history to repeat itself. As Mark says, going into that uh, 2002 game, yeah, exactly the, the same scenario, Barry. Yeah, I, I hope it's the same scenario. Um <laughs> I mean, that game, thinking back, it's, it's crazy to think it was 22 years ago, but two fantastic teams going at each other. Um, brilliant game to be involved in, and I just hope tomorrow is the same, Paul. Um, but listen, I, I believe Celtic are going in as favourites. Can, um, can you not call me Paul for the rest of the show? Oh, sorry, Would that, that be OK? Uh, yeah, I'm getting mixed up. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. But Rangers are, know that they need to get a result. Um in isolation the last two games Rob have not been good enough in terms of the start so Rangers really need to start well if they are to lift the, the Scottish Cup a third old firm meeting in 35 years I mean I know Rangers were out with the top league for for a while but that's an incredible start Barry isn't it that that, uh, that there have been so few in three and a half decades yeah it's crazy and uh, and as we mentioned I mean 22 years ago I, I thought there was one in between that um, so so it was what? 1999, the Rod Wallace goal. Yeah, the treble game. Yes, yeah. May 29th, 1999. 1-0. And then yeah. 2002, the 3-2 game. Um, and what a game to be involved in, as I said, Rob. The, the calibre of player that was in show 
not just in the team that I played in, um, also the Celtic team. It was back and forth. There was everything you wanted in a game of football. Two teams were at it. Really good goals. Um, and listen, it's the best way to, to win it with the last kick of the ball. Um, with Peter Lovingcrans with a header with a brilliant cross in from Neil McCann. That's right. Would it be unfair of me to ask you to name the Rangers team from 22 years ago, the cup final? Yeah, I'll come back to you in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because funnily enough, I was I was writing something the other day and I was just looking at looking at the teams and unbelievably yeah. star-studded, Mark. It, well, both both teams, I mean, you're, you're talking about... Uh, I think Sutton played in the defence in that eventually, case. Eventually, I think he eventually moved back. Did he? Yeah, because right, the Celtic start. players will tell you that uh, Peter Lovenkrantz peeled off him. It was Sutton's fault. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I can, I can have a pretty good stab at both teams and absolutely brilliant with the greatest respect to what we're going to watch tomorrow yeah. and it will be a great final mm. and some excellent players for me night and day compared to 22 years ago mm. in terms of the quality yes. on the pitch well I think you would have to admit that wouldn't you whether whether we like some it or might, not some people might not <laughs> no I'm being serious some people, but for me yeah. you, you, you've played them you and I covered them mm. for years at that time um, th- those were really both of them really going at it with with, with top draw players all over the pitch and I think you'd be deluding yourself Barry wouldn't you to think anything other than those were better quality teams than, than now we'd have to be honest about that wouldn't we yeah and I'm not just saying that Rob because I, I played in the game uh, and I played with their players uh, if you think I mean, guys like Amaruso Craig Moore Arthur Newman Neil McCann Fernando Rickson Fernando Rickson yeah um, I mean Warriors not just very good football mm. players Guys with such strong mentalities, and then if you look at the the, the other side in in terms of Celtic, Bobby Baldy, Henrik Larsson, John Hartson, Chris Sutton, Paul Lambert, Neil Lennon, um, there was a lot, a lot of quality on show, and um, it was just a brilliant game to be involved in, and it is my favourite. And I'm not just saying that because obviously we won that cup final. I just think the level, a performance, a performance. Sorry, should I say? from both teams was uh, top class do Rangers need Warriors tomorrow do they have Warriors tomorrow well that's a question that's been posed to them over the last um, four or five weeks and I think they really need to get up against Celtic uh, tomorrow stop Celtic it's key players and I'm talking about their key players in their midfield three for me as their engine room as their, their, the guys that you need to stop dictating the game of football and I think Rangers have to go and make sure that these Guys don't get a second on the ball, uh, Rob, because they're such influential players for Celtic. And I'm talking about Callum McGregor, Rio Hitati and Matt O'Reilly. I think Rangers have to pick a midfield three that are going to go up against them and frustrate them. So it's first base for Rangers tomorrow, stopping Celtic. Yeah, I, I do believe that. And ideally you would want to go out and play free flow and attractive football. But I, I believe that Rangers need to stop Celtic. Because you know what the first 15 and 20 minutes is like? It's 100 miles an hour. Um, and then normally the game takes a lull where that's when you can start to get a grip and a foothold in, in the game. But I believe Rangers have to start the game in the right manner because if you look back in isolation, as I mentioned at the start of the programme, Rob, the start of both the game at Ibrox and Celtic Park, Rangers were way off it and allowed Celtic to, to dominate and you can't allow that um, tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Mark, history can be misleading, stats can be misleading, but certainly those the recent figures, Celtic unbeaten since mid-December, that's through about 24 games, mm-hmm. uh, the, the old firm results this season, but for that late Rabi Matondo equaliser at Ibrox last month, it would have been four out of four for Celtic. Yeah, they've, 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 you know, you'd have to say Brendan Rodgers has, has got the measure of of Rangers, whichever manager he's come up against over his two spells at the club, he, he knows how to get the job done. And I think not only that, Rob, when it comes to the 90 minutes, which is very, very important, is the build-up to it. And I thought um, Brendan Rodgers taught Philippe Clement a lesson off the park in the build-up to the to the last game uh, in terms of how he handled the media, what he said to the supporters, how he said it. And I think, as I say, I think that was a lesson because Brendan's been here before. He knows the city. He knows the old film environment. He knows what to say, when to take a step back, when to keep quiet, when to, um, when to deliver um, a message. But for tomorrow, I think Celtic start the game favourites. But it's an old cliche. It's a cup final. Anything can happen. 
Um, I don't think it's a formality by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think if Celtic score first, it could be a really sore afternoon for Rangers. Rangers need to find a way of changing the tide of the old firm games this season. They've, they, they've never scored first against Celtic, so that would be a start for them to make Celtic go and think, oh, oh right, OK, and then how would Rangers be defending a lead? I think that would really suit Rangers, um, to be honest, but it's getting that first goal. Um, Philip Clemon needs to find a way to do that tomorrow. Can they blast out of the blocks, Barry? They have to. They, they have to. They, and I believe if Rangers are to win the game, they I agree with Mark, they need to score the, the first goal. And then put a bit of pressure on Celtic to see how they mm-hmm. handle um, that situation and make them work. Make them work uh, for their, their victories. I don't think they've had to work that hard over the last, uh, well, certainly the last game. I know Rangers come into it the last 10 minutes, putting them under a bit of pressure, but they really need to come out the blocks, as you mentioned, Rob. Because um, if they don't, I worry it could be a long afternoon for Rangers. You spoke, uh, Mark, there about how well uh, Brendan Rodgers has fared in terms of his media, uh, how, he's, how he's handled the media side of things. How has Philippe Clement failed or how has he not been so good in terms of what he's, his utterances in the media? I think, I mean, the, the, the one that... That sticks out as the when when Brendan Rodgers says when, he took, when, he, took, when he took the bait. Yeah, and he's and, and I said that at the time, Barry. Barry, so you just you know when it's something like that, Rob, you need to listen or read to what the person's saying before you dive in. So he hadn't actually heard the clip for himself, and I think he did kind of track back a wee bit later in the week about it because it wasn't being disrespectful. Brendan Rodgers has thrown it out there. The bait was put in front of, of Philip Clement, and he took a bite. Unless it's just a small thing. Ultimately, it doesn't matter when the referee blows his whistle for the start of the 90 minutes. But I just think there's been a, there's been a few things, not just in the build-up, but maybe in the last couple of months, where I think the fleet come on, mm, no, I'm not so sure. I'm, about, yeah, I'm not so sure that's what you should be saying. I'm not so sure that's how you should be saying it. Um, so little different things. But ultimately, it's about him picking the right team. Tactically as well, I don't think he's been great. The 3-H three, the three game um, at Ibrox. When for me, had Rangers won that day, they'd, they'd have won the league and they blew it. Um, tactically, he didn't get a, a, a strong enough press on Celtic. He left Dessers too isolated. Got there at half time, changed the flow of the game uh, in the second half. So I think there's things where Philippe Clement, um needs to do better on and off the park. And it's got to start tomorrow, Rob. I don't think he can go through, um, what would that be, four games without beating Celtic? That's not the sign of a manager that's going to take you to where you need to get to. No, and but also the discipline has got to be spot yeah. on. You yeah. need to keep eleven men on the pitch. Yeah, because um, if you think back to the last game, you know what I'm going to mention, Rob, mm-hmm. the Lundstrom challenge. I don't think there's any need to make that that challenge. You could stand up, and you don't need to lunge in. So it's important that Rangers have the discipline if they have any chance. You're winning the cup tomorrow, and he doesn't play for you tomorrow. He has he has no part to play, does he, John Lindstrom? Yeah, I think he'll be in the eighteen. I mean, personally, I would go with a, a midfield three of of Rask and Diomandi and, and Dijon Sterling. That would be my midfield three um, guys that have got good energy and as I not ma- not massively creative. That no, three. but at, at times you need to find a way to win the game, mm-hmm. Rob. Mm-hmm. Now, I would rather go. Well, I'm going tomorrow. I would rather watch a Rangers industrial performance and winning the cup than going and playing nice pretty football and no winning the cup here he is uh, Philippe Clement on that John Lundstrom question I'm never uh, going to make decisions about what fans are thinking at that moment because that's emotion and they don't see trainings they don't see the team working they don't even know the players how they are or how they are in the dressing room so I don't think I need to answer that question if I need to start with him or not it's about the decision that I make with my staff, about what I see in the trainings and what I saw the last couple of months in uh, in the games. As he maybe needlessly, Mark, got drawn into that one as well on John Lundstrom, where, he, where he's talking to the fans there and saying, you don't know John Lundstrom, you don't see him in training, um, you, you don't know the person he is. Um, yeah, there's a balance, Rob, as we all yeah. know. There's a balance between... We know where he's coming from there. Answering but, that, answer yeah. that question, um, evading it, and certainly what you don't want to do under any circumstances, and, and Barry will know, having captained the club, is you don't want to go head-to-head with your supporters. Always find a way to avoid 
challenging your fans or saying it, that they're wrong is it as if he's talking down to them there I, saying I, I, you, I don't, you don't see him in training so I, I don't you... know about that he's, listen on the other hand he's been honest from a media point of view you're getting a line you're getting an angle you're getting an insight into into what he thinks but it's like we talk about silver celebrations on the pitch don't antagonise your fans don't go and, and take them on it's not necessary it's not the right way to go about things and ultimately the supporters will win so, so don't don't challenge him in that way. And again, I just think with, with Philippe Clermont, yes, find a way to tell us about Lundstrom without having a go at your supporters. Here's Brendan Rodgers talking about tomorrow. Listen, any final is always is always a challenge. And obviously a Celtic Rangers final, it's a great occasion. But for us, it, it's really focusing on our, our game and, and how we can win the game. Well, certainly to the occasion, it, it can do. But from a football perspective, there's no different approach to this game than to... The other four games we've had in the league, you know, we we want to impose ourselves in the game. <clears throat> our intention is to win the game, so our game plan and our preparation is uh, is all built towards that. It was a very open media conference that from Brendan Rodgers, wasn't it? He, you know, there there is a swagger about Celtic, I, I think, at the moment, Barry, and and he, and he openly says Celtic are on fire. Yeah, and I have to agree. Um, obviously, when it really mattered. When it came to the crunch, the Celtic stood up to the the task in in hand, and I just think they're hitting good form at the right time. I mean, I'm like you; you probably watched the game down at Rugby Park. That first forty five minutes is the best I've seen Celtic all yeah. season. Um, obviously, the celebrations after it take away what what the the performance was like against at Mun um, when they were picking up the trophy. But it sounds to me, and it feels to me that they're in a good place. Um, and Rangers re- need to be really ready for it because they're coming up against a very good team there's no denying that with very good players have they been in top form this season? no they haven't but over the last month um, you can see them starting to to hit form um, and Rangers know that no doubt they're going to be in for a tough one tomorrow and they really need to to stand up Paul because uh, Paul sorry again I'm, I'm calling you Rob, uh, they need to really stand up and be counted because if they ain't, they're in for a, a long, long afternoon. And Brendan Rogers has just mentioned there, they intend to impose themselves on the game. And that's what they've done in the last two old firm games. They've imposed themselves, they've dominated, and Rangers can't allow that to happen. There are other phrases that I could be using here, Mark, but ramming home their superiority might be one that, that Celtic will look forward and hope to do tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I think from, from any team tomorrow, whether you're Celtic or Rangers, first and foremost, you just want to get your hands in the cup at five o'clock. If you can do it with a bit of style and a bit of panache and win with three goals or whatever, all the better. You know, it, it just adds to, to the whole flavour. But ultimately, whether you're Callum McGregor or James Tavney, you just want to be standing there holding it aloft and taking the, the acclaim of the, the, the 25,000 winning supporters um, inside the stadium. I just think with it... As I said, I think Celtic are favourites of so the teams. I think we can all pretty much pick the Celtic team um, See, that's because the there's, thing, just a, there's a flow to it now. Yeah, you know? I don't think Celtic are going to come in with any surprises. No. Mm. The only question mark is who plays through the middle. Is it Kyogo or Ida? Mm. The rest of the Celtic team picks itself. It's the Rangers team that's the, the issue in terms of injuries. How many questions would you have, Barry, on that Rangers 11? Would you have question marks over half the team, maybe? Yeah, probably four or five, mm-hmm. Rob. Yep, four or five in terms of the Celtic. The only question mark, as I mentioned, is yeah. who plays through the middle. But I know who will probably play, and that will be Kyogo, because yeah. he's obviously turned up before in, in these games. Um, so that's the issue that Philip Clement has got. Who's going to be available? Who's going to be match fit? Cause you, you, you need we, legs, don't you? You need yeah, energy tomorrow. Me, me, and, me and Rob oh, are speaking fit? off air. Ryan Jack, who I really like, who I think is an important player for Rangers, can you really bring a Ryan Jack into this game who's no played since the start of March? I think it would be too much an ask. There's no doubt he would give everything and we'd probably do a decent Mm. job, but you need guys who are are going to be absolute 100% at it. That's what you need if you're going to lift that trophy against a team, as we mentioned, who are in fine form. And that's a question we'll go deeper into on the other side of the break on the Go Radio Football Show who are the the gambles that uh, Philippe Clement 
is going to put his faith in tomorrow. He reckons he has to do something different. He has to come up with something special if Rangers are to get the nod for the first time this season against Celtic. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go! Barry Ferguson, Mark Guidi, Rob McLean on the Go Radio Football Show. It's on the eve of the Scottish Cup final. Only the third Old Firm Scottish Cup final in 35 years. It's an incredible stat. Celtic going in as favourites. What can Rangers come up with that is going to upset the apple cart? What can they do uh, to make sure it's their double tomorrow because Celtic are chasing a double as well? Rangers League Cup holders, Celtic have won the title. Uh, Who is going to get their hands on the old trophy? The Scottish Cup uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's get uh, Robbie from Falkirk involved in the discussion this Friday evening. Hi, Robbie. Good evening, panel. How are you doing? Uh, good evening. I, I would just like to make a point about the team selection, my general thoughts on the game, and uh, if I could make my, put another point to Mark Guidi on Adam Eder. First of all, I would like to say about the uh, the team. I think uh, that's, here's my team that I'm going to pick. Is, okay. Uh, Hart. Hart, Johnson, Carter, Vicker, Scales, Taylor, McGregor, O'Reilly, Hatate, Forrest, Maeda and Kyogo. I think that will be the, the team that will start the game. Now, on my thoughts on the game, I'm quite confident that Celtic will win this game. Now, if Rangers want to take inspiration, they should actually look to that first game derby game of the season when Celtic went to Ibrox. I know that Rangers' uh, injuries are more extensive than uh, Celtics back then. But if you mind, Celtic have never even had Carter Vickers, they never had a party. I think they had three or four players out and they actually went there as the underdogs and no many people fancying them. And they went and got a, a one nothing with that Kyogo, Kyogo with a long strike. So uh, I'm, ho- I'm quite confident that Celtic can win the game. Um, is it going to be tight? Is it going to be, uh, it's got the potential to be tight, but as Barry and uh, Mark says, if Celtic get that first goal in the first 10, 15 minutes, you, I mean, you, could, you could potentially be looking at a 3 4 nothing Celtic. Uh, I mean, to take uh, one of Robbie's uh, points in the, the first old fun game of the season, Celtic won 1 0, but I do remember the, the starting lineups coming out whenever it was, you know, an hour before kickoff, and I thought, Rangers big thing. I remember thinking that scene both sides, I thought, Absolutely, Rangers big time to win this afternoon. Home advantage. Celtic having a couple of injuries, and Rangers having a, you know a couple of new players, etc., etc., etc. So you're right. They're, they're, that's why they're, they're, you can never take anything for granted in terms of Robbie's team. Yeah, I think that's the team that, that will start the game. The only one that I thought, if there's a surprise, he might look at Navroski. I thought he played well against St. Man last week, and in place of Scales, but Scales has been. And ever present, so I would imagine that, that uh, Liam Seals will get the nod um, tomorrow. Um, and, and psychologically, we'll it's good to go in with a settled team as well, isn't it? Aye, they're, they're, you know, they all know each other. Rob, the turning point in Celtic season, and I know you, you've got that stat: Celtic were unbeaten since December, whatever it is. Sorry, one defeat it is what, since one defeat, mid-December. A yeah. real turning point in terms of them going from actually winning games, but actually playing well, um, has been the introduction of James Forrest. It's been massive. Absolutely massive. It's been a game changer for Celtic the past six weeks. Um, so him and, and Maida uh, and the wings could could you know could really be explosive tomorrow if they're on it. There are there are big psychological matters, Barry, to be sorted out, aren't there? I mean, the minute you mention Dyson Maida, you you think about James Tavernier, don't you? And you and you you think about what how is Tavernier going to going to tackle that tomorrow? And there are all sorts of one to ones around the pitch where Rangers have to be coming out on top or at least being competitive yeah that question's been labelled at, at this Rangers squad and, and see if I was in that team or squad that, that, that would beat me inside that would be hurting me that would be my drive to go and say right do you know what if you think there's a mental block with us we need to go and show there's no mental block that's that's all the desire and hunger that, that the Rangers team need I would like to think that's the attitude that they have but you have doubts about it yeah, because of the the, the results mm-hmm. um, this season, um, when there's been really good opportunities, I thought. I mean, that Robbie's just mentioned that that game, um, the Kyogo strike. I mean, it was a brilliant strike to win the game, but 
I thought I fancied Rangers. Celtic came away uh, with the, the result, obviously missing such important players. I'll go back to the game three weeks ago at, at Ibrox. Um, the start after 20 seconds, 19, 20 seconds, going to go down and then just, it, it was easy, they were an easy street Celtic for that, that first 45 minutes. It took half time, the manager's obviously gave him a bashing, he's changed it, he's brought Shame on, it made a difference. They were pushed 10, 15 yards further up, uh, further up the, the pitch. Done better in the, the second half, got the point, obviously with Matondo's brilliant strike uh, towards the end of the game. And then you look at the, the last game against Celtic Park, again it was a, a really slow laboured start and that's what's, I believe it's caused Rangers problems over the last um, couple, certainly the old firm games. So yeah, people are are, are questioning their, their, their mental state when they, they come up against Celtic but as a personally, that would be killing me. People saying that and I would want to put that, that right with going and, and putting a performance in and getting a result. How much, Robbie, do Celtic have the upper hand over Rangers at the moment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, quite, if you look at the results this season, um, you know, Celtic have really started their games well. And when Rangers have came back into it, it's really when they've been out of the game, they've been outplayed. And, um, you know, obviously that's three each game. I, I, I hate to admit this because a lot of Celtic fans are going to laugh at me, but the season Rangers actually say that moral victory with a three each game, I actually kind of know where they were coming from because they were so far behind in the game. It wasn't your normal three, three, three back and forth in a kind of even game. It was just because Rangers were out there at half time. The game looked over, it was 2 0 Celtic, then Celtic even went 3 2. So for them to draw level, I understand that they've done a, they maybe over egged that a wee bit, but I can understand they were, they were the happiest team at the final whistle um, in that game. But apart from, I mean, They've been beaten in all the rest of the games. That yeah. was the only one. That was a, 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 a draw and um, three wins for Celtic. Yep. Um, so I mean, I, I, I'm confident that Celtic have got the momentum going into this uh, game. But as much as I hate to say that form goes out the window, sometimes it actually it's usually the form team, the form team that usually wins the game. But then again, a league game and a cup final are different altogether. It's a one-off. The league you can come back in the league you can come back the next again week you're looking at the next old firm game if you lose it but this is a total one off. If there is a if there is a if there is a game that can actually stay forum goes out the window the out the window yeah. as a cup final. Yeah, so many examples of that of course. How much, Mark, is this about the psychological battle and the psychological state that both these teams are in? Uh, yeah, I mean, you would expect Celtic to be to be going in feeling really good about themselves and expecting to win. I don't I don't think they'll go in in a complacent frame of mind, Rob, I do think they'll go in there, you know, shoulders back, chest puffs out. Mm. Yeah, you're going to have to do something special to beat us today. They've got back to the belief, when haven't yeah, they? Yeah, when, you know, when it's 11 v 11, as the players are just about to take kick off. So for Rangers, they're going to have to overcome that and say, no, actually, it's us. And that's where James Tavernier, as a captain, has got to find a way to lead, to really stand up and be counted to be inspirational to be confident to be a leader um, and to tow a couple of backsides if it's needed required um, tomorrow Well, because one thing and I'll be interested to see what, what Barry's team is going to be for tomorrow and, and what the actual team is you know when we find out at quarter to two um, but guys that are guys that are winners guys that want to actually show I want to win I'm going to track my runner I'm going to work my backside off today you know, and I don't think there's been enough of that from from enough Rangers players. I think there's been too many that have gone through the motions that like to look the part, but when it comes to it, they just don't deliver enough. Whereas you look at the Celtic eleven, the eleven that we all think will start, you can pretty much hang your hat um, on them to 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 do your right good turn. I, I was just thinking back coming in today. I, I played in, I won five, and out of that five, three of them we were well below par, but we had a grit and determination. And we found a way to win the win these games, and I, I feel that as a type of performance it's needed from Rangers if they they are to lift that that Scottish Cup. I, I couldn't care less if Rangers are are poor. No, I doesn't it matter at all. No, no. does because, not. Because when you look back on the stats, it doesn't say in brackets. Well, actually, we were only that great that day. It, it, it's seventy per, per, uh, percent possession could have twenty attempts on goal. Rangers thirty percent possession three or four attempts on goal 
and see if you come away one and one now. All that matters is is you're lifting that cup. That's the most important thing. And I, I feel that's the type of performance that's needed from Rangers. A really gritty yeah. dig, digging deep. Um, but the question mark is, from a lot of people, can this Rangers team do that? Do they so have they've it? got an ideal opportunity to show that they can do it yeah. tomorrow. More from you, Robbie, in a sec. Well, let's hear from your captain. Uh, looking forward to the game tomorrow. I mean, that's uh, it's, 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 it's external, I think, was, was, was quite a lot of it. Um, to be honest, we... Just with the nature of the season and how it goes, if you don't pick up the first trophy, then you know a lot of your work and, and everything else goes unnoticed right until the last ten days of the season. So um, maybe externally now everyone's thinking, yeah, it's maybe not too bad. Um, but you got your battle, and, and, and leagues are, are one over ten, eleven months of really hard work and graft and perseverance and resilience and. We've put ourselves in a good position now. Obviously, we we go into the game at the weekend full of confidence. We understand the challenge. It'll be a, a massive game. Both teams, really good teams. Um, so we understand where we are. We we have to give everything to the game. And um, cup finals, you need a bit of luck. You need things to go your way. You got to play well on the day. Um, so we, we, we've got a good chance. We we turn up. We're, we're full of confidence um, off the back of obviously securing the league. So not for us. Um, We've always been confident in, in obviously the last sort of 10 days of, of put us in a nice place that hopefully we can finish with double at the weekend. Robbie, Celtic have timed their run beautifully, haven't they? Um, McCarter Vickers was in and out of the team for a spell. Hatate was out for a long spell before coming back. Callum McGregor's been used really carefully, sparingly, as he's been fed back into the team. Uh, and you seem to be, again, firing on all cylinders at just the right time when the trophies are getting handed out. Yeah, 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 and just when you're talking about firing on all cylinders, uh, as I say, uh, as I said at the very, very start, I'd like to make my point uh, on Adam Edom, Adam Eder to yep. uh, Mark Guidi. Mm-hmm. Mark, see the thing, see the see the thing about the guy is when you think him, people say, well, uh, he's a different option to Kyogo, but if you actually look at his attributes, a lot of people will think, ah, oh, he's a big target man, he's a big, he holds the ball up and that. But if you actually look at what this guy can do, he's got a good touch. He's got good passing ability. He can run the channels, and he's also ve- he's quite quick. He's not a slow coach. He's about definitely quicker than a guy like Jack Amakis. What I'm trying to see is uh, Mark is he's a very very well rounded striker, and he's oh, obviously he's got the big goals. You know, there was a couple against Hibs, a couple against Motherwell. Obviously that one to put them three two up at Ibrox. He's, for, 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 I, I don't really look at appearances when it comes to goals. I really look at minutes on the pitch and obviously he's had a few starts but there's been most of them have been substitute appearances as well Mark I really think Celtic should go for the guy and I really think he's a well-rounded striker what do you think? Yeah I, I, I would go for him um, Robbie I'm, I mean I, I don't know for sure I've read one or two things that maybe the fee would be you know around about £5 million um, and I think if, if that is the fee then, then I would go for him he's also young so I think what, what the benefit that you've got of having him in loan and having a, a look at him uh, is that he's got an idea of what he's working with? Brendan Rogers knows what he's like, um, you know, and um, I think that I think there's a fit there because if you don't, you're clearly going to have to go and buy another striker, and unless there's somebody out there that's available that Celtic have their eye on that we don't know about. But all things being equal, Adam Ida, five million pounds for me, go and do it all day long. Barry, how highly do you rate him? Is he better than a, a Shankland or a Miofsky? Well, well he's certainly impressed and he scored goals I thought going back to the game at Rugby Park I thought that was his best game in a, a Celtic shirt um, I thought his link up play was really hold up play really good um, and yep the, the ideal situation is he knows the club he knows the expectations he's been up here now six months uh, and if he's if he's round about that kind of mark um, that four or five million pound I think Celtic will um, do the deal because there's there's still a lot of work. I think he's rough around about the edges as well. I still think there's a bit of work to be done, but he's at an age where I, I probably think that Brendan Rodgers thinks he can improve him. Um, so he certainly come up here and showed signs that he can be a very good striker. Are you excited, Robbie, about what the summer's going to bring in terms of transfer targets? You would imagine Brendan Rodgers is going to get the sort of players in that he would like to have done last summer to to have a had a better crack at the Champions League. 
Yeah, uh, what I like about the, as much as there's no football, uh, well certainly no uh, club football during the uh, you know the summer, I actually quite like the the hype about who's coming in and you're getting this guy being linked and uh, you know obviously a guy like Mark Greedy, he'll be loving it, <laughs> he'll be licking his lips, you know, with all these kind of you know articles and that all the journalists get, you know, for all, all, all the. Uh, you know, the tip-offs they're getting for players coming in. And I really, really uh, like the, the close season as much as there's no football. It, it just doesn't stop and there's all the the players getting linked with the club. But I definitely think they need to obviously get uh, a new uh, goalkeeper into the place, Joe Hart. Uh, maybe a left-back to push Taylor, certainly better, somebody that was better than uh, Alexandro Bernabe. And obviously the striker situation, if they can't get Adam Ida in, in fact, I think they need another striker. Anyway, if you're going to tackle all, all the cup competitions, um, domestic cup competitions, the league and this Champions League with the eight games, I think you need three strikers. Now, here's another thing about replacements. What you need is three strikers all about the same level. But it's just, and that's where most positions, if it's a left back, a centre half, you know, the midfielders, you want guys that can come in. You're not going to get a carbon, absolute carbon copy. Uh, the, the, the guy like Carl McGregor, but you want a close as possible guy that can come into the position. So you're looking for, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, even your guys on the, the, the bench are first team guys. Yeah. Do you understand roughly what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mark, are you, you know look- what I mean? You want first are, team guys on the bench. Let's find out if Mark's licking his lips, are you? Uh, I mean, one point that Robbie made there, which will, uh, is a goalkeeper, um, Rob, and that will be Celtic's most important signing of the summer, who they bring in to replace Joe Hart. And I've been intrigued to find out who it is. Um, and as I've said before I said it last year um, about replacing Alan McGregor if there's a goalie out there and he's going to cost you six, seven, eight million pounds but you think he's the right one go and do it the price tag like that shouldn't put you off because you will not be successful you will not win a title unless you've got a right good goalkeeper and um, Joe Hart will take a hell of a um, you know gloves to fill Well Rangers have a battle Barry to hold on to Jack Butland That appears that way um, because of the season he's had yeah. Rob I, I think he's been phenomenal since he's come up I'll be honest similar to uh, the scenario with Joe Hart Joe Hart hadn't played for a couple of years Celtic um, took the, the opportunity to take him on I said at the time they were getting a top class goalkeeper uh, and a big character and it was similar with Rangers with, with Jack Butland um, he's come up here he's played week in week out he's shown that he's top um, top notch and the only worry for Rangers is um, that teams are going to be sniffing round about him. Um, every player... It's going to be Rob, a big fee though if he goes. Yeah, every player's got a price on their head. And yep. unfortunately, money down south is no object. Mm. So if a, a Premier League team fancies him, which I would imagine there would be a few of them looking at him, Rangers might need to brace themselves for a few bids. And if, if they do match their valuation then business could be done because that's the way it is up here yeah. at both Rangers and Celtic but that's the situation you want to be in isn't it You want to, number one you'd like to keep him mm-hmm. because he can be the sort of corner, ma- cornerstone of a new Rangers team yeah I've always said that Rob in terms of a top goalkeeper they're worth 12-15 points a season they're that important mm. I think it's a a position where you need to get virtually spot on they're one of your most important players and certainly in Celtic's case with Joe Hart I think he's proven that this year and in Rangers' case Jack Butland massive gloves to fill when Alan McGregor retired I was worried that uh, that wouldn't be the case but he's come up and he's been he's been absolute magic and the big thing about him is he's a big character in the dressing room and that's a worry if you lose yeah. somebody like that what's the effect it's going to have on the team going forward so hopefully the case is that nobody comes in for him and he's he's more than happy um, up here because I do I bumped into him on a couple of occasions and he is enjoying playing week in week out he's enjoying the the demands and the expectations and the pressures at playing at Rangers so hopefully um, he's here for another year or two more he's been one great piece of business hasn't he and he'll be a key player for Rangers tomorrow clearly um, in the old firm Scottish Cup final Robbie thank you for your call we're talking football till seven the go radio football show with go green property get your home ready for the market with help from their team of experts let's go so it's a go radio football show naturally enough dominated by the old firm Scottish Cup final which is tomorrow three o'clock at Hamden just a couple of miles from here 
and it is Celtic against Rangers, both going for a double. Um, of course, we had uh, the first leg last night of the Premiership playoff final. Still a, a place to be claimed in the top flight. Will Ross County hang on to their place or will Wraith Rovers replace them? And, and I just wonder, Barry, how important that late goal by Sam Stanton last night for Wraith might be. They're still behind going to Dingwall on Sunday, but at least they've, they seem to have got a foothold in the tie. Yeah, they've got their sail back in the tie. I thought up until Ross County scored the second goal, I thought they were the, the dominant team. Um, and then they kind of sat back and took their, took their foot off the gas and as you mentioned their Wraith Rovers got a, a vital goal with, with Sam Stunton um, and then they had a couple of other opportunities just after that um, so the tie's still wide open look Ross County are a good team but um, I'm sure Don Cowie knows that Wraith Rovers are also a good team I don't think they were in top form last night but that goal that they got back is so important to take up at Dingwall on Sunday. And I think Jan Danda showed what a quality player he is, Mark, last night for, for County. And of course, he's going to be a Hearts player next season and you, you can see him fitting in, can't you, to that Hearts team? Yeah, it'll be a quality, quality addition. Um, Rob, he's a really good player, technically very, very good. Um, never hides, always looking for the ball, keeps possession uh, nicely and, and is willing to, to penetrate. You know, He's willing to look for that forward pass, got him support. Um, the main strikers um, yeah I like him good signing by Stephen A. Smith I uh, took his penalty well last night well, there was no way any keeper was stopping that and it uh, looks like he wants to go out in the high on Sunday by keeping Ross County up and I think he will Talking of good signings uh, Air United have landed George Oakley today who had a good season with Morton uh, last time around he signed a two year deal at Somerset Park it's going to be interesting to see what Air do uh, next season isn't it with Scott Brown uh, in charge there and they've just announced that uh, the new North Stand um, is going to be open with a game against Celtic yeah in terms of Scott Brown I, I think he, he came in and he'd done a fine job he, he settled them down a bit they had some really good results uh, George Otley listen uh, Morton's player of the year top yeah. goal scorer that, that's a big loss for, for Morton um, he's a physical presence up top he knows where the back of the net is and it looks to me if uh, the air board are going to try and back Scott Brown to go and produce a team that um, are going to try and get promotion. There is another cup final tomorrow, of course, the English Cup final, both three o'clock kickoffs, and that's a Manchester derby. And that's going to be a tough one to predict, isn't it, Mark? How many goals City are going to score? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that there, Rob. Uh, yeah, you've got to fancy Man City um, strongly. Um, Phil Foden has been superb. I can remember. Whoa. Not long after I started here, uh, Barry Tippin Foden to potentially go on and be the best player in the world. And he can't be far he, off he it. Was, he was 12 at the time be, as well, he? Can't wasn't be he? far off it now. Six titles at the age of 23. Yeah. He's been sensational this season. And I can see, genuinely can see Manchester City running riot tomorrow at Wembley in what will be Eric Ten Hag's last game. He'll be out of job come Monday morning. Is it amazing that he's still in a job at this stage, Eric Ten Hag, Barry? Yeah, well, the new owners coming in, I just think they were going to let the season run out, yeah. Rob, and, and go and make their, their decision. I think it's going to be a long afternoon for Man U tomorrow. Um, Man City, I just love watching them. The young man that Mark just mentioned there, Phil Foden, six titles at the age of 23. The difference in him when he plays centrally, he, he's just, he runs the show. He runs the show. He's just a fantastic football player. And I honestly believe um, that he is going to be one of the, the best um, about, there's no doubt. But Pep Guardiola keeps throwing out teams every single season. I know they've got endless pot of money to go and spend, but these if you watch these fantastic footballers, one thing that jumps out at, my, at me is, they're not just top footballers, it's the work ethic Aye. they've got. It is unbelievable. When they lose that football, they work so hard to get it back. And they're an absolute joy to watch. It's also as well with Guardiola. If you think back, well, I can remember when Foden was kind of, you know, broke into the team. So it would be that first season, if you're talking six years, seven years ago. And then because he was getting into England set up at a young age, but seeing he's not getting enough minutes, send him out on loan, send him out on loan, he'll be frustrated. He's a waste, only getting five minutes here and there. But you talk about how to manage somebody. Yeah. So when you look at Guardiola, yes, he delivers success. Yes, he's got a lot of money to spend. But does he guarantee anything? So it's not only how he's a tactical genius, he's man management. So keeping Phil Foden on side, knowing when to bring him in, knowing when to take him out. And now 
even though he's the first pick in the team sheet. But back then, Guardiola's management of that young boy was absolutely first class, and there's no way he'd be where he is today without Guardiola looking after him. And the big, big number six in the middle of the pitch, Rodri. He's just an absolute machine. Yeah, yeah, he's he's unbelievable. And Bernardo Silva. I mean, you can go on and on, but I'm talking about these players, brilliant footballers. It's the dirty side of the game that they're brilliant. Mm. And that is as a footballer, and these guys are, are top end. It's just the, the amount of work and effort they put in, and that's why they're at the top end. Not just because they're good footballers, it's because. They do the dirty side of the game as well. They're picked so carefully, aren't they? Not just because of how they can play, mm. but they have to have the hunger yep. to, to, to win, win, win and keep the hunger. And, and it's interesting because I saw uh, Pep Guardiola being interviewed maybe last weekend by, by Gary Lineker mm. and, and basically being invited to say that he was jacking it in a year's time or whatever. He's, got no, he's going nowhere anytime soon he retains the hunger to keep on, on winning and, and and he wants players cut in the same sort of image Barry yeah but it's interesting I was watching the game last week against West Ham obviously they won 3-1 and they were interviewing the players after it and Bernardo Silver Haaland um, Grealish Foden they were all asking about Guardiola it's just he's so demanding and if you don't do it you don't play and I'm talking about running about and making sure you go and track your runners win the ball back it was nothing about what they're like on the ball it's what you do off the ball and if you don't do it you'll not be involved in his um, his teams and what a contrast across Manchester isn't it between the shape those two teams are in yeah and and I watched Sky last night the the the, uh, the journalist programme and they had a short list of four potential replacements they've obviously got a, got a bit of a steer um, you know Pochettino was one mm. uh, McKenna at Ipswich um, being another can't remember who the other two were to be honest um, but uh, you look at it thinking yeah okay but you know no great it's not like they're saying do you know what we're going to try and get Ancelotti from Real Madrid or we're going to you know, yeah. you know yeah. somebody that's really knows how to go and do it you know so I don't know they, might, they could end up with Gary Southgate or something like that maybe he'll tell you I don't know, is it right for McKenna? He's also linked with Chelsea, he had a, a wonderful uh, two years at, Chelsea, um, at, at Ipswich. Pochettino, I don't know if Pochettino's overrated to be honest, I'm not sure if there's a lot of bluster running about Pochettino. Um, but when you look at the calibre of a manager and who Chelsea are going to get as well, I don't see anybody, and then you've got Slot getting in at, at Liverpool, yeah, he ticks all the boxes, but any of them going to get the better of Guardiola? Mm. I can't see it. In terms of my new Postacoglu? Postacoglu. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the way that when I used to when I was growing up watching Man U up until Sir Alex Ferguson left, it's the way they played mm. open attractive football. And since you're talking about Van Gaal, Mourinho, Ten Hag, they're still no open. Def- <laughs> I, no, but they're really like, they're, they're no great to watch. No. As the teams that I grew up watching, Man U, Manchester United were unbelievable. I mean, you're talking about the players like Scholes, Keane, Giggs, Beckham's. All, all these um, sort of guys but when I watch Man United I'm bored they're disjointed mm. yeah, totally they, disjointed and just the, the, the players it's not the Man United that we were all used to um, but go back to the team they're the best team in the world Manchester City mm. by a country mile I know they obviously get put out with Real Madrid but they're an absolute joy to watch and it's just interesting listening to the players that play under them how demanding that he actually is but if you if you want to win things and you want to have the best team and the best players, um, you've got to do that. What, I'm a firm believer in that. What, what I love about Guardiola is that he's constantly reinventing as well. Even though they're continually successful, he's always changing things up. He's always bringing in something new. Yeah, and, and it's even if it's personnel, they just slip right into the... Yeah, you think they lost Gundy the in last season? They all lost their skipper, Gundy. And yeah, that, but I mean, you'd he, never know. No. What, what a player he was yeah. such an important player for them um, but it just listen they keep going on they keep just driving forward um, is it Doku the boy Doku, who's come yeah, in yeah, he, yeah. he had a slow start but now towards the end of the season you're starting to see what a quality quality player he is but they're just a, they're an absolute machine of a team it's and also as well sorry Rob that the way they must clearly function as a football club Yeah, because as Barry said there 
every summer it's, it, it's seamless. It might take one or two of them a wee while to, to get up to it and get into the rhythm of, of the demands. But that's a club that does proper forward planning. You know, they'll know their targets two years from now. They'll know who yeah. believe in. We'll be selling him or he'll go under freedom of contract. Here's the next one ready to come. So have we got a Phil Foden coming through? No. But there's a, there's a, there's a young man over in Germany. We'll go and get him and he'll be ready. It's proper forward planning. It's a, it's a football club that functions perfectly. It's the Manchester Derby in the English Cup final tomorrow. It's the Glasgow Derby in the Scottish Cup final. Three o'clock at Hamden, Celtic and Rangers. We will talk more for the next hour. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! It's only the third time in 35 years of Scottish football it's happened. The Scottish Cup final is Celtic against Rangers. 1999, 2002 and now 2024. Rangers haven't beaten Celtic this season. Can they do it tomorrow at Hamden? We shall uh, find out. Three o'clock kickoff. And uh, what is Philippe Clement going to come up with? He's uh, going to gamble, he says, and they certainly need Rangers a better start. For sure, our, our beginning of the game needs to be better. For sure. And uh, we worked on that the last times. It was not good enough, so we're going to try it again in a different way. But for sure, that was important. But it was, yeah, circumstances also sometimes going against you in a really unlucky way. If I think about the Ibrox game after 22 seconds, this ball can land everywhere, but now it lands uh, nicely in the corner next to your goalkeeper also. But that's the worst start you can have. Let's go full now to have a much better start. Inspired by Clement Rangers at that title turnaround, didn't they? It looked as if they would be favourites to pick up the crown, but it's all twisted back Celtic's way in the last few weeks. What would it mean to Brendan Rodgers to have two trophies at the end of this season? For me personally, it, it, it clearly satisfaction would, would would be suffice. But it's more what you give other people. It's you know for the supporters, it's everything. Um, you know they live their life for Celtic and, and especially a Celtic Rangers game. So uh, to be able to deliver that for them would, would be great. <clears throat> the players for the rewards of what how their discipline has been this season. You know, uh, discipline is one of the key elements of of not just. The football on the pitch, but off the pitch, you know, we uh, we stayed very focused, stayed true to our game and and and, and how we how we want to work, and then that is the players have got the rewards as the season has gone on for that. So, uh, so for me, yeah, it adds another. It would add another trophy, but uh, but I've always it's always been more the satisfaction that other people would get for it. Rob McLean, Barry Ferguson, Mark Weedy on the Go Radio Football Show. We heard there from both managers. We heard earlier from, from Philippe Clement and uh, talking about the gambles, maybe plural, that he feels he has to make tomorrow with players who might not be, might be well short of 100% fit. Uh, we touched on Ryan Jack. Can we develop that, that one? Um, he, he was on the bench at Tyne Castle, Barry, last weekend. I saw him out running afterwards, uh, but he didn't feature in the game. Um, would that be a gamble too far to play Ryan Jack tomorrow? Yeah, I firmly believe that you would have to some minutes into the legs, Rob. If you're going into such an important game. Why did he not play last weekend if he was in the bench? I, I, I was surprised because um, when Steve Clark um, announced his, his Scotland squad, he'd mentioned that he's been back um, fit and available for the last two stroke three weeks. Um, I really like Ryan Jack. I think Rangers have really missed him. Because um, he's got the experience, he anchors in the middle of the pitch, he covers, he lets other players go uh, forward. So, if if he had some minutes in his legs, I would say start him. But I think it's, um, I, I don't think it would be the right decision to go with, with with Ryan Jack. In terms of the other players, you've got Balligan. Obviously, he's only been missing a couple of weeks. He's had quite a a number of minutes in his legs. I think mm. if he's fit and ready to go. You want experience. He's a good defender. Um, the other ones would be Sima. Who uh, did get half an hour last week. Yeah, and um, if he's trained all week and he has no issues with his hamstring, he has got to start the game for me. And obviously, I, I just heard that a day or two ago that Ridvan obviously picked up a new injury. Um, 
Again, I think the manager will give him up to today's after today's training session. If he's come through that, then Red Van as well has got to play. So what's your team? We've, we've had your midfield. What's your starting well, 11? It would be, if everybody's fit, as we just mentioned, mm. and they're, they're okay to play, it would go Butland, the back four of Tav, Tav, uh, Tavenier, sorry, Balligan, Davies and Redvan, a midfield three, Edil Mandy, Sterling and Raskin, and a front three of Cantwell on the right, Seaman on the left, and Dessers through the middle. What do you think of that, Mark? Yeah, it's, it's a good team. It's a strong team. I've got about five or six variations. <laughs> yeah. We know just when the manager see, saying that he do something different. Yeah, as Mark, well, see, you know? the, only, the only position that I would have a question mark would be probably the right hand with my, with my team here, because McCausland I think um, scored an important goal at Ibrooks against Dundee. Because I don't think if Rangers got that goal, they would have got the three points. And obviously, you were at the game. Uh, he scored a cracker last week yeah, yeah and he was good he's um, he's energetic I don't think it would phase the, the young man as well playing in such a big game because mm. he's had plenty of big games since he's broke into the team this year so that that's the the one where I've been humming and hawing about who to play on the right hand side look if McCausland gets a nod I've, I would have no issues with that because I would fully trust the, the young man to go and put a performance on Would Celtic prefer to be up against McCausland or Seema? Um, in terms of what does that I, does that come into it? Do you do you kind of almost get into the opposition headspace a bit and think, well, yeah, well, well would I, they be more comfortable with McCausland or or Seema and the, the I, goal I the goal at, threat that he has? Yeah, well, both of them have, have goal threats because they score goals for the wide area. Mm. Like in terms of Seema, when he Seema's got sixteen, isn't he? Yeah, and when he come on, if you think back to the the three each game, when the manager made that change at half time, I thought he took Rangers further up the pitch, Seema. He obviously gets defenders going the way that they don't want to go and that's running back towards their, their own goal because he's got something that defenders hate and that's raw pace. And also, as you mentioned, Rob, he's got a goal on him. Mm. Um, and so has Cantwell and so has, uh, sorry, so has McCausland. But Cantwell never played the last game at Celtic Park. He's obviously, you I, again, I'll mention you were at the, the, the game against Hearts at Tynecastle. Mm. Cantwell, I watched the game. I thought he had a pretty decent game. He did. So is this the opportunity for him to go and show um, in the cup final? Um, so I think that's a decision. Or that's the only area of the pitch that I would kind of, um, I was unsure uh, unsure about. So I would probably go for Cantwell on the right hand side. Mark Barry's explained the midfield to us earlier on. It's it's about dealing with the Celtic midfield, stopping the, yeah. the Celtic midfield. Could could Rangers get too wrapped up in trying to stop Celtic and forget to play? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Um, but I think that is the right way to go about it, Rob. As much as we are saying Rangers really need to get the first goal, but they need to find a way to contain Celtic and also get the first goal. Um, and I believe that, that, that there will be that kind of defensive mindset uh, from the team tomorrow. I never thought about it. I never had Ryan Jack in my starting lineup until Barry met I didn't realise that Steve Clark said he's been ready for two or three weeks I know he was on the bench and didn't come on last week and that makes me think Rob that perhaps he didn't go on because he didn't want for him to pick up any injuries because he's going to start tomorrow Yeah, honestly yeah. That, that's starting to make me yeah, think yeah. you know because we're, we're saying he has to come up with something different Different. I think Lundstrom will come back in I can see the merit in Raskin but I'm just wondering now mm. Lundstrom Jack and Diamandi I'm just wondering if that's because one thing about Ryan Jack he is tactically disciplined yeah. he's one of the most experienced players at the club it could be his final game for the club yeah. tomorrow um, and I just wonder if he, he was just what just that mm -hmm. Scottish boy in there hand in part that's just making me mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. um, that well, maybe, well, he's just, I, maybe he's saved him last I, week I get Mark's point but I just think it would be too much a gamble I, he's I not know. played since the start of March you're coming up against a, a very strong three in McGregor, Hitati and O'Reilly I, I just think you need to be 100% look you, you know what you get for Ryan Jack he's experienced I think he's a very good player composure yep um, and he knows the game inside out and he anchors in the middle of the pitch I just think it came too quickly. I think he would needed he would have needed a couple of maybe games um, under his belt. But listen, who knows? Mm. He could throw one. I mean, that midfield could be totally different. It could yeah. be Diomonde, Lundstrom and, and Ryan Jack. He just yeah. needs to come up 
when I look at Celtic I look at the engine room and that's the strongest part of Celtic's team for me and that's what you need to get at yeah and it's not about playing nice pretty football Rob you just need to get in their faces and frustrate them and make sure they're facing their own goal every time one of the midfielders that trio of midfield face their own goal don't give them any space and time because if you give midfielders of that quality space and time they can hurt you when you were talking Mark that just made me think what, what about this Stevie Clark is not a gambler mm. so why would Ryan yeah. Jack be in the Scotland squad yeah. you know he's, he's not going to pop him in and then pop him back out again that's going to look mm. ridiculous mm. Stevie Clark must believe not just in his fitness at the moment but his durability to get through a World Cup campaign aye uh, so a, a, a Euros Euros, campaign yeah yep. I mean there's also as well um, you know two will get the chop I think one of the goalies will get the chop probably Liam Kelly but so it might just be one outfield player I think as well you know maybe Ryan Jack missed the last Euros unfortunately through injury mm-hmm. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying he's taking them purely a sentiment to do a boy turn he won't do that but, <laughs> yeah I know I do know he does like Ryan Jack Stevie Clark really likes Ryan Jack and see tomorrow I've referenced it many times in, in this programme because it was a phrase that, that Gordon Stratton used going into old firm games an old firm game you pick a team to save your life and I just wonder if that's where Ryan Jack's going to come in tomorrow so, I'll get, so I'm going to I've changed my, my team and by the way I'm only really saying that about two bonuses is buckling in goals and Dessers is your number nine but I've said for a couple of weeks now I would change the right back I wouldn't have I wouldn't have Tavernier against my either because I think there's a sign there would you play him somewhere else? Yes, so I would go Sterling, Balligan, Davis. I'd also go Barisic uh, tomorrow. I'd have Lundstrom, Diamandi and Ryan Jack and James Tavernier in there as well on the right-hand side. I'd, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking 4 4 one, one but who, who do I trust enough to be disciplined as your, as your further strike? So I'm going to go 4-5, 1, your 3 4 and have Seema on the uh, the the left hand side, and Dessers up top. But by the way, I'm not really having Silva, but I have to give him credit. I thought he gave Alistair Johnson a tough time. If Rangers looked like mm. doing anything that was down yeah. that that left hand side, but again, can you trust him? Can you trust Cantwell? Tom Lawns, I think you can trust Tom Lawns, but I'm just not sure he's shown it enough in games against Celtic. So again, this is what this is where you know questions, I'm yeah. sorry, answers that the manager needs to come up with um, tomorrow. But we'll, we'll and fitness see. comes in as well. We we don't know what's happening. No, the last yeah. couple of training sessions, no. Rob. Um, and, and listen, and, and do you know what? See, since you've brought Ryan Jack up again, <laughs> no playing. I did know. I do know. Sorry that he did play a behind closed door game. Right. A couple of weeks ago. Mm. I know it's not at the same level. Well, I think he's in tomorrow, by the way. But it's minutes in mm-hmm. the legs. Yeah. He's been training every day. He's been available to play. And maybe that's the thought process of the manager. Because um, he's somebody you can hang your hat on, Ryan Jack. You know what you're going to get for Ryan Jack. Yep. Is he going to handle the pace? Is he going to last the 90 minutes? Probably not in terms of the 90 minutes. Yeah, a good hour. Give it everything you've got and then make a change. So And what he's the, making the no team secret that I of. Gave you, I'll stick with that, but listen, it could be totally different. Yeah. It could be. I mean, he's admitting he's going to take risks. Yeah, and and that is one. That's one big risk. But maybe it's a risk worth taking because of his because quality, his experience, yeah. and it's right in the middle of the pitch yeah. where Rangers need to be competitive. He's going to have to, because of the the, the injury situation and different things, out of the starting eleven of the ten outfield players, there's probably going to be two risks. Two guys that are nowhere near a hundred percent. Well, that's Ryan Jack. Balligan, Sima, whoever. So he's probably said, right, what two do I want to risk? What two are really calculated risks that I believe can... can I don't think he's going to take five risks. No. But he's going to have to take a couple. So is Ryan Jack one of them? Ryan Jack still played against Celtic this season, to the best of my knowledge, and certainly not in the last couple of games. No. I just think that having him there and then Barry said he's, he's behind closed doors game, he's in the squad, so I'd... That makes me think he didn't play him last week. He just wanted to give him a wee flavour of being the first team again because you know what? Because we've what, what, seen it, and I'm sure Barry have seen it in his time with, with Walter and, and, and Alec. There'd been a couple of players pulled and said, Listen, you know what? You're not playing the next couple of games, but see a week on Saturday, mm-hmm. get ready for the Celtic game. Mm-hmm. Or see two midweeks from now, you're playing the Champions League game. Get focused on that, get ready because I've got a specific job for you. I, I think you risk Balligan. I know he's not played the last 
three games, but you've got to. I agree, Balogun definitely. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, Rob, he's he's experienced. He's steady, like, isn't he? Aye, but also he's got a turn of pace. Yeah, I know he's thirty four, thirty five. Uh, he's no slouch. No. So for me, it's important that he comes into the the centre defence. But again, listen, it's a brilliant debate. That three or that midfield three, because uh, do you know what Rangers have got to get it spot on in there. Yeah, they have to get it spot on because that's in my opinion no I don't know if you agree Mark or Rob that's when games are won and lost yeah I'm just looking out that window Barry and it's been tipping it down in the last wee while mm. you're going to be drooling about that you're going to be on that playing surface tomorrow uh, I don't think you're allowed to stay there but you'll have to come off again but you'll be Try on it best. it's, it's going to be it's going to be a nice playing surface isn't it with a with a with the rainfall maybe yeah, but I've checked the weather. It looks if it's going to be <laughs> nice and dry tomorrow. But listen, I'm sure the water, the pitch, look, the pitch. Uh, I seen it. I was at the the semi final against Hearts, and it looked like a bowling green. To I be was here on with Tuesday. You. It's yeah, impeccable. It's right. in absolutely tip top condition. Listen, Hamden, Hamden's had a lot of stick over the years for yeah. the surface, and rightly so. But for tomorrow, absolutely perfect. It looked that way in the semi final when I was there. It looked in the best condition it's been in a, a long time, so there's no excuses. If it is dry, Rob, listen, they've got the the, the sprayers and whatever. They'll mm. they'll, um, they'll put a bit of um, water on the pitch so it's nice and slick. So it's got it'll be perfect conditions. I'm going to put the captain's armband on on you just now mm-hmm. for a, for a brief couple of minutes. Yep. What is the team talk? What is if you were in in that dressing room? If you were among those players going into this game? tomorrow mm. and you're the captain you've done this a million times before but it's maybe as important tomorrow as it's ever been yeah it's listen whoever you're coming up against make sure you get the better of them if you're not having a good game I was always a big believer Rob certainly in these games but every game that I kind of i done this you know after 5-10 minutes of the game whether you're on it or not but if you're not on it I make sure who I'm directly against is not going to be on it and I think if I'm in that dress room at this moment in time, I'm making sure the two wide boys don't get a, any time on the ball. As soon as the ball gets to them, you get close. If they get by you, sometimes you need to play the game and take a foul. The midfield three we spoke about a number of times on this programme. You need to face, make sure they're facing back towards their own goal. And, and Rangers really need to get in their faces. As I said, I think this is one of these games that Rangers really need to be gritty it might not be great to watch in the eye but who cares if it allows you to win the game Do you worry about the messages inside that Rangers dressing room going into games at the moment being the right messages? Well you've got to have a bit of pride in yourself Is there enough of that around? Well they're professionals I don't think that for one minute they've not got um, that bit about them it's just sometimes you've got to hold your hands up and say right do you know what there is a bit between the teams the last couple of games there has been certainly the, the game at Celtic Park up until the last 10 minutes when Rangers come into it the game at Ibrooks, Celtic were really dominant but then Rangers showed a different side in the second half it showed that the manager went in and he had something about him he gave, he's clearly went in there and gave them a bit he's made the change and when they get further up the pitch and they got against Celtic, they, they matched them. Celtic then knew they were in a game. This is what they've got to do for three o'clock. That's what they've got to start. That's the way they have to start the game if they have any aspirations of winning the, the game of football. So if, I believe if Rangers hopefully win the cup tomorrow, it's going to be roll your sleeves up, gritty performance in their face. I don't think it's going to be a brilliant football and performance but do you know what I couldn't care less and I'm sure the 25,000 fans and 100,000 fans are, are watching it in the pubs and houses or whatever I'm sure they would take that all day long as well It's interesting isn't it uh, to, to be a fly on the wall inside that Rangers dressing room and in the Celtic dressing room tomorrow Mark same again? Yeah it'll be yeah absolutely same again there's no really any reason to go and change anything as I say, the introduction of Forrest, I mean, I look back at the game at Celtic Park a couple of weeks ago, you know, to me, tactically, it looked as though Celtic really targeted that area uh, in terms of O'Reilly being over there, McGregor joining in, you know, they were playing lovely wee passing 
um, passages of play with James Forrest involved and that led to obviously led to the opening goal um, but it also led to several shots from in and around the box um, from Celtic and then all of a sudden booms a 60 yards diagonal switch of play from Carter Vickers Maida's in okay it was an own goal it's not something Celtic clearly would have worked on um, from, from John Lundstrom but they, they, they can have varied it so yeah Celtic's very settled Raw because they're getting in you know Brendan Rodgers will have known his cup final team for the past two weeks there's not been any injuries there's been a fluency about them whereas Rangers uh, at the moment I'm sure now as we sit here at 25 past 6 Philippe Come on, will know he's starting 11 tomorrow but there's no doubt there'll be at least two if not three players that you'll be thinking I hope I can get an hour out of them. I hope I don't need to make a couple of changes in the first 20 minutes or so, you know. The players will know the team. Yeah. You, you'll you know the team after today's session. Um, and just thinking back, listen, I wish I could tell you, obviously we're on air, but I'd be saying in the dressing room, obviously I, I, I can't, and the, the type ah, of language on. you use, no, but... We've got the bleep button. It's plain and simple, and you need to win your individual battles. Yeah. All over the pitch. Now, you, you, you can have maybe one or two off it a wee bit, but you have to have eight or nine that are that are winning their battles, and then collectively, you need to sometimes whoever you're directly playing against, Rob, they might get the better of you the odd time. Then you need to rely on your teammate who's beside you to, to um, come in and, and help you out, and that's the type of performance I think is is needed uh, tomorrow. Because listen, see if you see if you go out and you give it everything. The, fa- the fans love that. Yeah. See if you get into people's faces, they love that. Yep, they love seeing brilliant, free flowing, attractive football, brilliant goals. Winning football but, but is what listen, matters, isn't what it? What they love is they yeah. love playing players playing with their heart on their sleeve, getting <laughs> in, in the, the faces of the, the, the opponents. And that's what I think Rangers need to do tomorrow. There's no tactical listen, it is important, but it's a one off game. Rangers really need to go for it. Barry was right in the middle of it last time it happened, the old firm in a Scottish Cup final. It was 22 years ago. Up to date tomorrow, three o'clock kickoff at Hamden. Who is going to complete the double? The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! On the eve of the Scottish Cup final for 2024, it is Celtic against Rangers. A double is on the line for both. And it is a mirror image of what happened 22 years ago when uh, Rangers had won the League Cup. Celtic had won the title. Uh, which of them was going to do the double? That was the question. And it was Barry Ferguson and Rangers he, who came out on top in that one. Remember the... The late goal from Peter Lovenkrantz. I think there was barely time, Barry, to get the game restarted, was there, uh, after uh, he'd scored his second of the game? Yeah, I remember him scoring and I'm, I'm saying to the referee and he's like, look, that's it, it's done. So, absolute buzzing, but obviously Celtic took uh, centre, they played it back, they played the long ball and I'm screaming at the referee, you told me it was <laughs> over. <laughs> and uh, I remember Big Ammo heading that, but he headed that across the ball and then the whistle went, I thought, right... Brilliant, that's yeah. it. Done, but he, he told me that's it, finished. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking they would just take centre. Never, never trust the referee, yeah, Barry. Yeah, I know. So and it, it is Nick, Nick Walsh we were just confirming there, Nick Walsh referee tomorrow, and uh, John Beaton is on the VAR, and I think we wish them both the, the best Absolutely. of good fortune, don't we? Yeah, we, we, we don't want to be speaking about them at five o'clock no. tomorrow or no. whenever. So absolutely, yeah, you do. You hope that it all goes smoothly for the match referee, the two assistant refs, and uh, the VAR. Um, guys and that we're talking about a, a really good final and not something that's settled by something that shouldn't have been given There's a lot of money on the line tomorrow I'm not talking about the officials of course uh, but there is a lot there's money on the line but it doesn't quite compare to the uh, English Premiership playoff final on Sunday between Leeds and Southampton I was just reading up about it before I came in here uh, it's worth they reckon about 170 million over th- over three years to whoever wins that or if you stretch it to five years, that that's even if you go straight back down again, it's 170 million over yeah, three years. Yeah, you get parachute but, payments but, but for it, four years but if you do get exactly. relegated. But if you stay up, mm. then it's 270 million over five years. Oh. They reckon. I mean, that that that's that's a game changer, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's a different world um, down there. It's the richest game. Yeah, in, yeah. in football, uh, yeah. no doubt about that. 
two really good teams. I watched Leeds against Norwich at Ellen Road, and I've got to be honest with you, I thought Leeds were exceptional. Um, Was Liam Cooper playing? No, he came on. He? he came on the last five minutes as a substitute, but he's a hero down there. They were yeah. obviously they were four. Uh, I think it was four 0 up. They were obviously cheering them because uh, listen, he's been a big player for Leeds over the years. But are you asking me my my thoughts on who'll win that on Sunday? I think Leeds will be too strong. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, I think Leeds will be too strong. Um, they're a Premier League team. They've got Premier League players in the in their lineup. Mm-hmm. But in saying that. Southampton are a good team two Scottish internationals down there three three Ryan and, Fraser oh forgot about Ryan Fraser but he's not been included in the squad for a while Stuart Armstrong it'll be interesting to see if he's going to be involved because he's a big player for us and Shea Adams mm. up top who I think has been over the years since Steve Clarks took over has been a really good Scotland player so I don't, think it'll be a cracking game Rob but I just think Leeds have got that bit more quality and don't forget that the Scotland legend who's in charge at Southampton, of course, Mark. Russell Martin. Yeah. Yeah. He was at Rangers. Yeah, he was at Rangers yeah, for a spell right. as, um, as well. Yeah, played at Norwich with a few um, clubs. Um, highly rated on these young modern um, coaches. I, I agree with you, I think Leeds will win. Leeds finished ahead of Southampton the table, but Southampton won both league games um, this season. So. A little bit of pressure on that one, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, and I'd like, I, I like Southampton, but, but there is just something about. Leeds, you know, and also they've, they've got they've got young uh, Archie Gray in the yep. team as well. Member of the Gray family. Um, I know he's played his allegiances to, to England, but anyway, he's, oh, a, he's a Scottish. Is he? He's, he's, he? a, he's a Scottish. Uh, is that definite? Yeah. Well, to be honest, I thought Rob um, a couple of weeks ago. I think I said it on here. You did. Um, you know, with Scotland having that problem on the right hand side with, mm-hmm. with with Hickey and Patterson not being available, I thought just jump in the car and, and go and see Archie Gray make a personal plea because he plays up and down that right hand mm. side to say listen come and be part of the Euros and, and be it now maybe they did and he still said no I don't know mm. but that, that would have been my uh, shout so hopefully the Gray family that, uh, that uh, they, they is he known Sunday. naturally a central midfielder yes he's been playing he's up been and down playing, the right yeah, he played yeah. in that Norwich game at mm. Ellen Road up but you're right. right I think they see him as a, as a centre mid but uh, for whatever reason they've played him the right hand yeah, side yeah I've seen him a, a few times he's, he's you like him yeah I really yeah. like him yeah, um, I played with his dad, Andy, mm-hmm. at under twenty level, uh, under twenty one level uh, for Scotland. He, he was a, a decent player, had a good career. Um, but his his son Archie, um, I think he's got everything going to play at the top level. Mm-hmm. That, that that the Gray family connection uh, to Leeds United is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, Eddie's still a, an ambassador and has mm. been for a number of years. We've been the manager there, the assistant, uh, you know, when when David O'Leary was there and Terry Venables and, and all that. Um and then there's 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 Frank who's actually his grandfather, won the European Cup with Nottingham Forest, um, played for Leeds two. And then there's there's Andrew. So yeah, a big a big, big connection. But I think I think it'll be a cracking game on Sunday. Mm. Well, I'm looking forward to watching it. Wembley there won't be a seat to be had. Um and uh, yeah, I can see Leeds it'll be close but I think Leeds will get there Talking about that Scotland uh, defensive situation the right side of uh, the defensive situation and we did have that chat um, about Archie Gray and, and obviously Tony Ralston is the player in possession at the moment I guess in, in that he was third in line uh, behind Aaron Hickey and, and Nathan Patterson but Ross McCrory um, is in the squad um, which which is a big boost for him. He's, he's of course, um, you know, a contemporary of Lewis, isn't he? He came through the under-21s mm-hmm. yep. with uh, Lewis Ferguson. Yep, and had a, a good, strong finish to the season with Bristol City. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, I, I know quite a lot about um, Ross coming through at Rangers. Um, he's adaptable uh, as well in the yeah, squad, isn't he? What I like about Ross McCrory is he could have easily stayed at Rangers, but he wanted to go and play games of football and he took that opportunity to go to Aberdeen and I always take my hat off to boys because it's easy just to stay and pick up a good salary mm-hmm. and say you're involved at Rangers but he went away played at Aberdeen done really well and got a, a good move down to, to Bristol City uncapped but listen it's good to see that he's got an opportunity in this next um, couple of games and training sessions it's up to, to Ross to go and show Stevie Clark that he's more than capable to go to Germany. Because um, the good thing about Ross is he can play wing back, he can play right back if he goes to a back four, he can play centre half, and also he can play central midfield as well. So that's the beauty of having a player like um, 
Ross McCrory in the, in the squad and listen it's brilliant to see that he's been called up and it looks as if his brother is going to have the same sort of decision I, to I make this that, summer yeah. by the looks of it Robbie he has to go and play um, I don't know if Mark agrees with me he's, I think um, he's 25 26 26 maybe? Yeah. well there you go I, I just think now he's at a stage where he's he'd go and play because mm-hmm. listen he's a very good goalkeeper he's just not had enough games under his belt and I think he might be similar to his brother have to go and, and play and I see Aberdeen are, are interested in him so it looks to me if he'll be on the way out of, of Ibrox um, but I think he's at the, the stage where he knows himself that he needs to go and, and make sure that he's a, a number one somewhere He's learnt from a few good goalkeepers hasn't he Robbie McCrory Yeah he has he's a really good goalkeeper um, and he's played in um, a couple of Rangers one inside against Celtic I think he maybe had actually clean cheats in both games but um I I think there's an agreement with with Rangers. I think there's always been proper discussions. The whether they sell him, I, I think if, if I'm Rangers, I'd, I'd rather they went out and loan so that you've actually still got them because you don't know what's going to happen with, with Butler even a year down the line. Um, for now, so um, I think as long as Robbie gets out and plays somewhere, apparently it'll be fine. Whether that's in a permanent move or as a loan, but I think there's an agreement. I think that's why Rangers are looking at Liam Kelly and others because they're going to let McCrory go. But I think it will be uh, a loan move. On the subject of Rangers looking ahead to the cup final tomorrow, James Tavernier, the captain, how important is it to beat Celtic for the first time this season? Yeah, we've obviously fell short um, a few times in, in games. Um, you know, I think we obviously need that, that extra 10, 15% um, management during the games. And, you know, the key thing is taking our, taking our moments. I think that's the, the key lesson in these games is when we, we do get the moments is to take them. Um, obviously put ourselves in, in the best possible chance to, to achieve what we want to achieve. So, yeah, it's obviously important to, to win the game. And, yeah, I know all the boys have been really training really hard uh, this week and we're really prepared for, for the game. If it's 90 minutes, 120 minutes or penalties, yeah, we're all really prepared. What does another 10-15% management mean, Barry? No, but the key lesson is you've got to start well. I was always a big believer, Rob, when I, when I played. If you start well, you start at a high tempo, it's easy to stay there. If you start slow and pedestrian, it's harder to get up to the level that you want to get mm-hmm. to. Um, and listen, it is. It's, uh, the key for me is, look, it's easy saying, take our chances or, or whatever. But for me, the most important thing is you have to start the game in the right manner. That's what's been the, the downfall of Rangers. Because they have come in stronger as the game has went on. But let's see how it, how it pans out. If you start really strong, put the pressure on Celtic. Maybe go that goal up and see how Celtic react to you. Because I've not been in that situation. Here's um, Philip Clement talking about starting quickly. For sure, our, our beginning of the game needs to be better. For sure. And uh, we worked on that the last times. It was not good enough. So we're going to try it again in a different way. But for sure, that was important. But it was, yeah circumstances also sometimes going against you in a really unlucky way. If I think about the Ibrox game after 22 seconds, this ball can land everywhere, but now it lands uh, nicely in the corner next to your goalkeeper also. But that's the worst start you can have. Let's go full now to have a much better start. Philippe Clement, Mark, claiming bad luck in some of these games. Is that washing with the Rangers fans? I, I, I don't know, but I, I certainly, from my point of view, I see where he's coming from. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you look at that, that goal. Um, do, you know, do, you know, do, you know earn, do you not earn your luck? Aye, you do, but, but you know, I, I think if you're Philippe Clemore, you know, God, it is, you know, you look at, okay, Tavernier looks spooked mm. by Maida coming on his shoulder, but he does try and clear it, and it has, I mean, it is a freak goal. Nonetheless, it's a goal, and it gets Celtic at the start. I said before, the first Old Firm game at Irox. Rangers do go one up, but it goes to Van. The goal's disallowed. I thought that was very, very unfortunate for Rangers that that goal never, never stood. Um, now again, it's about discipline. But Lundstrom, a moment of madness. Yeah, at Celtic. That's Park. not that's not bad luck, is it? No, it's not bad luck, but it's a moment of madness yeah. that, a, that a manager must. My God, you know, you'd, you'd be getting them by the throat. Yeah. Um, so there's all those wee things. And what James Tavernier said there as well, you've got to take your moments. You think back, Silva's missed an absolute sitter at 0-0 at Parkhead a couple of weeks ago. Goldson, I think, misses a sitter at, when it's 1-0. Yeah. 
yep. um, to get the, you know to make it level. So you know, I'm, I'm sure about somebody could come on and cite ten sitters at Celtic have missed in the old family. But I'm just for a Rangers point of view, you can see, yeah. But ultimately, they've got to be better, and the manager's got to be better. Like I, say, I don't think the manager gets soft Scott Freeze. I think tactically, um, you know, once or twice he's he, he's not been on it in terms of games against Celtic. So like you said there, we need to start in a better way. And we're going to try it in a different way, I think, was it? Yeah. The way. yeah so, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. And again, I just keep thinking now that because Barry's planted it in my brain, I think Ryan Jack's going to start tomorrow. I think that's the one where you go, oh, right, okay. Just go in there and just help shore it up. Just stay solid. I think he's a decent communicator, Ryan Jack, as well. But he'll, he'll be a talker. Mm-hmm. Just talk your guys through it. Be solid. Hamden doesn't phase him. A cup final no phase him. I have a feeling he's, he's getting thrown in tomorrow. How much pressure is Philippe Clement under tomorrow? I mean, he's going to have the summer to rebuild. He will rebuild, no doubt about that. But in the here and now, he hasn't beaten Celtic yeah, so and far. I, and I think Rob will put himself under pressure. I think he's at that type of a personality and, and manager. Um, but he'll, he'll know how important it is. He had a, an opportunity. Uh, they went by them four weeks ago in that trio of games, Celtic, Ross County and Dundee. Uh, and it's hit them hard there's no doubt about it but the great thing about football is you've got another game round the corner and you've got this spectacle tomorrow at, at 3 o'clock there's no better way when everybody's throwing things left, right and centre that mentally are they strong enough the new manager or this group of players have not beat Celtic this season well there lies your opportunity at 3 o'clock an old firm Scottish Cup final. Will it be settled in 90 minutes, 120 minutes? Maybe penalties as well. It all kicks off at three o'clock tomorrow. I hope no other. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get your home ready for the markets with help from their team of experts. Let's go. Yeah, and we're going fast uh, towards the end of the show, but still time to talk a little bit more about an intriguing matchup at Hamden tomorrow. It's Celtic against Rangers for the Scottish Cup. One trophy tucked away for each. Who is going to make it to the double? And here's Callum McGregor on playing Rangers again. Of course, you, you, you take a, a sort of small degree of comfort in that. But again, we know what, what cup finals are like. We know what these derby games are like. If you don't turn up on the day, then then it make you, you make yourself really difficult uh, to, to get a result. So we, we understand what we have to give to the game. Obviously, we've played each other is that four times now. So... Both teams will know each other reasonably well, um, and it and it comes down to, to Saturday. What are the players prepared to give? Um, who turns up and, and plays well on the day, and, and who maybe gets that bit of luck to, to get them over the line? So we've we've got to try and drive all those factors in our favour, um, and, and hopefully we can we can do it and finish with them. Callum reminding himself how many times they had met so far this season. It was almost four wins out of four. It would have been had it not been for Rabi Matondo last month and that late, late equaliser for Rangers. So on the other side of the fence, James Tavernier, can Rangers handle the pressure? Yeah, I think I don't think the club would sign a player who can handle the pressure of Rangers. Um, it's it's it, you know to play for this club, you need to you need to obviously understand the magnitude that you. you that you're going to be put under, um, if it's from the media, if it's from the fans, if, if it's from the demand that you know you come here to win every single game you're playing. So that's you know everyone who signs here knows the expectations. So um, you, you relish pressure as a footballer, and you know I could continue saying what I've been saying, but we obviously have to do the talking on the pitch. Um, but I know the boys will relish this moment this weekend, and they'll be fully focused and fully ready for what the job in hand is and we've obviously got to see it over the line if it's 90 minutes, 120 minutes or penalties, we've got to make sure we see it over the line. How difficult, Barry, is it to shut out the noise, the incessant noise that goes on if you're at Celtic or at Rangers, talk about who's in, who's out, who Philippe Clement's going to gamble on and maybe as well talk about who's heading out of the club in the summer as well. It's impossible with social media, everybody um, watches the, the, the TV um, can that be a, can that be a factor at times like these well, going uh, into a massive match? In terms of like criticism, nobody likes criticism. I, I was fine with con- uh, constructive criticism, um, and if I have had that, I, I used to use it in a positive way to think to myself, right, you know what? If somebody in the press gave me a hard time about a poor performance, I would then think to myself, well, do you know what? See the next game, I'm going to show what I'm like, how good a player 
and that that's what you've got to do. You, there's no point in curling up in the corner and moaning about it. It's part and parcel when you play at a massive club. You're demanded and expected to win games of football, and if you don't reach the standards, you're going to you're going to come in for a, a, a bit of criticism. Um, it's just part of it. It's it's not easy at times, but if you want to play at a club like Rangers, you need to be able to handle these situations. Matt O'Reilly could be on the way out at Celtic in the summer purely because he's played so well and performed so well and there's going to be loads of interest in him but Celtic will get serious money for him if, if he does go. At Rangers, Mark, there looks to be going to be a massive turnaround in players if Philippe Clement can manage it in the summer. Yeah, I think he, he, he wants to, you know. Um, there'll, there'll be a natural exodus Paul, uh, Rob as in Borna Barisic, um, John Lundstrom perhaps Ryan Jack that we've been, been speaking about a lot tonight and I'm sure there's probably 9, 10, 11 more I mean, I've, I've been told that he's there's been 15 names given that, that can go uh, that they would like to go but whether you can get rid of these guys um, or not but you can totally understand why because you look at evidence Rob they're not good enough No, what's there is not good enough um, they've only won one title in 8 seasons they beating Celtic this season, albeit that they, they, they took them really close, and it was you know the, that three game spell Celtic Ross County and Dundee. But ultimately, what's there isn't good enough. There needs to be major improvements because what you've got to remember now is Celtic were there for the taking this season. I believe will they be there for the taking? This Rangers are really going to have to go some because you'd expect Celtic now that Brendan Rodgers got full control to go and get three top gank and a new goalkeeper and a couple of really belters I think and whatever the manager thinks he needs to bring those belters in Celtic will want rid of five or six at least as well so when I mean, you look at it it's it's where you go and get those guys for Rangers you need to go and get guys that you know are bargains that overperform that really rise to the occasion that hit the ground running that find a way collectively to get the, the better of Celtic over 38 games which will not be an easy thing um, to do even if a guy like Matt O'Reilly um, goes ultimately Celtic would prefer to keep him certainly the manager would but it's a business and they're going to have bids to contend with uh, and you probably I would I would expect him to go but but maybe not mm. the question of, is of course that's that's round the corner it's not far round the corner but it's round the corner for Rangers that uh, a big squad turnaround you would think in, in the summer but does that is that seeping in at the moment is that seeping into their thinking ahead of what is now the most important match of their season the last one yeah I, I've been asked this a couple of times over the last week or so Rob but you're, you're a professional and you take pride in what you produce on the, the pitch look if there's a lot of chat and rumours outside about who's leaving that, that shouldn't concern you you've got a big game ahead of you after that, that's when it can concern you and you go and you have a chat with the, the manager or the, the the staff at the club. Um, so I, I don't buy into that it's, that it'll affect the the squad at this moment in time. Look, the good thing about the manager is he's been open and honest saying that there needs to be changes. There's clearly going to be changes. There's, what, six players, five players out of contract, Kemar Roof, Lundstrom, Barisic, John McLaughlin. Um, you've got your three loanees going back. So that's eight um, out the door, seven or eight out the door at this moment in time. Um, and it's natural. They've came to the, at the end of their cycle, the manager says, and he wants to make changes. Now, it's up to the players that are there at this moment in time to say, do you know what? If the manager's going to be making these decisions, I want to be part of this going forward. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I think it's going to be a really busy, busy summer for Rangers. But listen, it depends on... If he's wanting to get players out, the issue you have, Rob, is there is a lot of these players still under contract, whether that's a year, two years or three years left. There has to be buyers out there for them and they're on good salaries. Yeah. So that's the issue that I think the manager may come across. But listen, he's been open again. He spoke with the board. They're in line with what he's wanting to do. They're going to try and back him as much as possible. So I expect a, a busy summer. Um, ahead for Rangers in and terms of incomings and outgoings and more pertinent at the moment on the eve of the cup final of course is who's in that Rangers team tomorrow we're pretty sure 
uh, about Celtic, maybe only one position as a question mark over it for Rangers. Well, you would imagine looking at the t- the Tynecastle team from last weekend, I would have thought half of it is changing again. So it's change and change and change for Rangers at the moment. Gambles thrown into the mix as well against the most settled of Celtic teams, Barry. Yeah, I mean, you say it started at show six and I was like at four, but actually when I've wrote, wrote it down, you're right, I think there's six positions up yeah. for grabs. Mm. But again, Rob, that comes down to who's fit and available because there, there are, sorry, people who have been struggling over the last couple of weeks with, with injuries and obviously the the second part of the, the show um, you were speaking about Ryan Jack and you have just threw it all up in the air listen <laughs> it, it could be the case that a Lundstrom Jack and, and even a Dijon Sterling are yeah. start or, or listen Look, Lundstrom and Jack was a, and I know we're heartened back but that was a right good partnership for yeah. Rangers yeah, they, Lundstrom they, and Jack they, they were a good foil they dovetailed yeah. well didn't they played yeah, well they were a good foil for each other um, I'm going to throw that, I'm going to throw up in there a little bit further here because just by backtracking a couple of days to to hearing again what Stevie Clark said about including Ryan Jack in the mm-hmm. Scotland squad. Experience, uh, I think. Take uh, I'll take Ryan Jack first. Obviously, Ryan's been quite an important part of the squad and the, the team, and and he's in my time as head coach. Uh, like you said, he missed the last Euros unfortunately with an injury. He hasn't had the best finish to the season with Rangers but I know he's been fit for the last two or three weeks and it just hasn't been selected at the club which is which is unfortunate for Ryan but I think he deserves to be there he's, he's a midfield player who's a little bit different to the, the other type of midfield player that I've got so that was the thinking behind Ryan he was, he was choosing his words very carefully there about why Rangers weren't including him for the last two or three weeks he said unfortunate for, for Ryan maybe he was hinting at uh, a bit strange that he's been fit and hasn't hasn't played, but but maybe it's all been forward planning, and and maybe he's the sort of player that you can just you're going to pitch in tomorrow, Barry. Yeah, Rob, look, it could be the case that you're just wrapping him up in cotton wool, and making sure that he's he's ready to go and give you a good 60, 70 mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. It, it, the it, game of his life. Yeah, look, I wish we could fast forward to quarter to two. Yeah, tomorrow. I, I'm really interested interested Aye. to see what the Rangers selection is going to be because um, we've come up with all different scenarios yeah. tonight we know what Celtic says but we're 99.9% mm. sure it's only who's going to play through the middle but we're all in agreement I think it'll be Kyogo yeah. so bring on quarter to two um, and we've been, we've been speaking plenty about how Rangers haven't started these old firm games well enough mm. up till now so so that is going to be that is a crucial part of, of tomorrow isn't it it's how Rangers start and maybe that backs up as well the feeling that he's a guy you gamble on from the start thinking, well, you'll get, you'll get maybe 50, yeah. 60 minutes out of you him. You could rely on Ryan Jack. The only thing you can't rely on is he going to be fit and available every single week. Mm. But if Ryan Jack's fit and available, he's one of the first names in the team sheet for me. I think he's very important for Rangers, but the, just the sad part of, of Ryan that he's, he's not been fit and available enough for Rangers. But... Who knows, they might have just been careful with him. Similar to what Celtic have done with Callum McGregor. I know he played some minutes mm-hmm. or whatever, but it could be the case that he's played that behind closed doors, just making sure his training's getting stepped up. And, right, Ryan, go and give me what you've got, and when you, you blow a gasket, I'll bring you off. Yeah. But we could be totally wrong. It's always fascinating, Mark, and this one's no different. Yeah, there is. You know, I mean, the Rangers team, as Barry says, quarter to two, Rangers at A, the starting 11, and B, what is it the something different that the manager has got obviously I think there's there's five certain starters tomorrow there's Butland there's James Tavernier there's Dujon Sterling um, there's Mo Diamandi and there's Cyril Dessers I think if Balogun's fit he's a certain starter yeah. as well out with that the two wide areas a potential so, number 10 Davies, so, Davies, so right. Davies and Balogun so you've got four or five mm-hmm. who gets an audit left back who's in your wide area who's potentially going to be the other two, you With know, centre mid, you know, so there, there, there's all sorts of things in there, you think. And the other yeah. unknown quantity is your prediction, which you're going to give me, Mark, right now. <laughs> my prediction for tomorrow, Rob, thought long and hard about it, and like my Rangers team, I've changed it many times uh, in the past hour or so. <laughs> anyway, prediction tomorrow, I'm going to go Celtic to win the cup and to win it 3 1 after extra time. 1 1 90 minutes, Celtic to win 3 1 extra time. Barry? Well, I've thought very short about it 
<laughs> Which Rangers is maybe better. Win. Rangers have to win. Think about it, Rob. You need to go out with a bang because quite a few of these players will probably leave the club and you want to go and enjoy your, your summer. Barry I, Mark, thanks I, a lot. Then. I, We're right out of time. Uh, enjoy the cup final, everyone. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 Let's go! When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.